In this tutorial, I will show you how to deploy a Docker container to AWS Elastic Container Service using the Copilot CLI. Copilot is a tool to deploy and manage containers on AWS almost entirely through local terminal commands. It makes it simple to create and maintain a production-ready deployment with built-in support for CI-CD pipelines, separate development and production environments, and rolling deployments. It does this by leveraging CloudFormation templates to automate deploying services that are needed to deploy to ECS. For example, VPC, subnets, security groups, all that will be created by Copilot for us with recommended settings that will work for 99% of use cases. It will also generate and run CloudFormation for the actual deploy to ECS itself. For this tutorial, we will need a few things. First, we will need a container to deploy. Right here, I just have a very simple Express application, just a Hello World application. In my next video, I will do a deployment tutorial for a real world application. So we will again use AWS Copilot, but we will have a real backend, a real front end, a database. We will do things like throw a cloud front in front of the front end as well as the domain. So that will be the next video, but for now, we're just gonna go over the basics of Copilot. So I just have a very simple application here. You just need to be able to run your application with a Docker file. And additionally, you need this to be a Git repository that is uploaded to GitHub. And along with the account, you are also going to need the AWS CLI installed locally on your computer. So just go to this page and follow the instructions based on your operating system. You're also going to need the Copilot CLI itself installed. These are two separate CLI tools, so make sure you have both of these installed. The easiest way to install this one is with Homebrew if you're on Mac, that's what I did. But again, there's instructions here for each operating system. Now I'm gonna go over some concepts within Copilot itself, and we're gonna try to keep this brief because I think it will make a lot more sense when we actually go through the tutorial. So first there's a service and this is just your code itself. And again, it has to be a Docker container. So this can be any kind of application. This can be a front end application. This can be a backend REST API. It can be a full stack application. Any Docker container here can be a service. Next we have environments. This is a set of AWS infrastructure that is needed to run an ECS service. And each environment has its own set of infrastructure. So it is all kept separate from each other. So for example, you can have a development environment and then you could have a production environment that is a mostly a copy of that development environment. And you can have your production environment running, you have live users and you wanna work on new features for your application. So you work on them in your development environment. You can test them out in the same setup that your production code will run in without actually affecting your production users. And then once you have those features ready, simply merge them over and they will deploy to your production environment. So it's really great that Copilot has built-in support for separating your development and production environment. You can have as many environments as you want. For this video, we're just going to do two. Next is a pipeline. A pipeline is just a way to build your code automatically when you push it to the repository. So that's why we need our code on GitHub because when we push our code up there, it's going to trigger a build pipeline that will deploy our code to an environment. So each service can have multiple pipelines and each pipeline will deploy to one environment. So for this video, we will have service, we could just call it service A, and then we will deploy service A to a production environment and a development environment. And we will do that by having two separate branches in our service and each branch will push to a different pipeline. And then finally, we have an application, which is just a wrapper of all of these services. So you can have multiple Copilot services in one application, or you can have just one. You need at least one for the application to work. So for example, you could have a backend service and a front end service, and then that comprises your application. So first, I'm just gonna make sure I have both the AWS and the Copilot CLIs installed. So to AWS version. Okay, AWS is installed, and now we'll do Copilot. Okay, both of those are installed. 
And now let's make sure that our container actually works. So first we're going to build our image. I'm just going to do node API. And now we're going to run that image. We have ours on port 3000, so we will run it on local 3000. localhost 3000 there we go our application is working so the first thing we have to do is give the command line access to our account so we are going to do that by going to the dashboard go to i am and we're going to create a new user you can name this whatever you want next then we're going to do add user to group we're going to go over to the right here and create group and again, call this whatever you want. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using the administrator access policy. And make sure you add the user to that group. And then hit next. Create user. And now we're going to click into that user. Go to the security credentials tab right here. Scroll down to access keys. Create access key. Our use case is command line interface. I understand the above recommendation and then next. Here you don't need to make a tag, but you can if you want. Okay, now we have our access key and our secret access key right here. So now we're gonna go back into the terminal and we're gonna run AWS configure. And it's gonna ask for the access key ID, which will be this first value here. And then once you paste that one and hit enter, then it's gonna ask for the secret access key. So go ahead and paste both those values in there. Okay, we are ready to get started spinning up this deploy. So we're going to go into our application folder and we're going to run copilot init. And what we are going to do right here is we are initializing the application. So that's the wrapper for the entire application. And we're also going to initialize our first service because we must have one service. So. For our application, I'm just going to call it Copilot App. And then here, so now we're spinning up the first service. And here's one thing that, so there's a bunch of options with Copilot, which is really nice. So if you just have a static site, for example, like a Gatsby site, you can use this. And this will spin up um, AWS CloudFront which will serve your content from an S3 bucket. There's also this app runner option. So if you kind of want to do the same thing that we're doing in this video, but you want to use app runner instead of ECS, which has some trade-offs with pricing. So app runner is going to be request driven. So if you're not getting a lot of requests, it will probably be cheaper. If you're getting a lot of requests, it might be more expensive than ECS. So that's just a trade-off you have to make. For our video, I'm just going to be doing a load balanced web service. And again, there's more options here. If you want to check them out, go to the documentation. And we are just going to name this our REST API service. And our Docker file is just in the root here. So this path is good. And we know that our application, we can just verify, is going to be served on port 3000 here. So make sure that this value matches up with wherever you are serving your application. Okay, and we can see this Copilot folder was created here, and it's going to spin up a whole bunch of infrastructure here for us. So I'll come back when that's done. Okay, now it is asking if we want to deploy an environment. So just like I said, we need one service. We also need one environment to deploy that service to. So we're going to create one. And then we will also be creating a, an additional environment later. So we'll create our first one. So this will just create our dev environment right now. And it is going to start spinning that up as well. Okay, so the environment finished deploying and it actually went ahead and automatically deployed our service to that environment. And so that whole process took about 10 minutes or so. So don't worry if it takes a while. So before we check that out, let's see what actually 
happened here. So first in our code, we can see this Copilot folder was created. This is defining our entire Copilot application. And within our application, we have one environment right now, the dev environment, and we have one service, which is our REST API service. So first let's check out this dev manifest. Not too much going on here, mostly just specifying the name. This is also where if you wanted to import any of your own existing infrastructure, you would do that here in this file. We're not going to be doing that in this video. Now let's check out the service. So here again, we got the name here. You can specify the path to your Docker file. So if you had like a different folder where your Docker file is in, then you can specify that here and the port once again. And then here we have some performance values uh, at uh, CPU memory and count here. So if you wanted to increase performance on your application, you would mess around with these values. So like you could put the count to three, you could increase memory, increase CPU. For now, this is just a tutorial. So these values are fine for me. And the platform here, this is important. This needs to match up with the platform on your Docker image. So here we are using the node image. So let's go to Google here and we're going to type node docker and we'll check out the official image and we're going to scroll down here and here quick reference supported architectures so if we go back we can see that the architecture that it created our service for which is x86 64 is actually not one of the supported architectures of our Docker image. If we go back, we can see we're using this node image. So the node image can only run on these architectures. So we have to change our manifest to reflect that. So we're going to go with AMD64. And again, so make sure you do that for your image because otherwise you will definitely run into an error down the line. And now let's check out what actually happened on our AWS account. So that folder copilot is, you can think of it as an extraction layer above cloud formation. So let's see what cloud formation was actually formed on our account. So again, this was a fresh account. All of this was created by copilot. So we can see right here, we have infrastructure roles. Let's see what this is. Okay, these are just two IAM roles. Let's go back to stacks. We can see here, this is our environment, I believe. So if we go to resources, we're gonna see, okay, we have 23 resources. The key one right here is the VPC. This is the wrapper to everything. And then we're gonna see we have subnets, route tables, all that. So again, Copilot just created all this for us, which is absolutely amazing. We don't have to worry about creating any of this ourselves. And then we can see here our actual service, which was created. So here we can see the service itself. Here's the ECS service. And it created a task, task definition and just everything we need to run that ECS service. So again, if you were doing this without Copilot, you would have to set up a lot of this on your own. I don't know if you need necessarily all of this, but you would have to set up quite a bit on your own and Copilot just did absolutely all of this automatically, which is amazing. Okay. Now we are just going to create two more things and then we are done with this tutorial. So first we are going to create an additional environment. So what we're going to want to do first is create a new branch actually. So we're going to get checkout dash B and I'm going to create a dev branch. So we already have a main branch. We're going to create a dev branch. And now what we're going to do is create a new environment in Copilot. So we're going to do Copilot ENV init. And now we want to create our production environment because we already have a development environment. So let's call that prod. And we're going to use our same uh, credentials. So just go to profile default. And again, just use the defaults here. Okay. Our environment was created. So now we have to deploy our environment with this command that it gave us right here. Copilot env deploy. 
Okay, and that was successfully deployed. So now if we go back to our code, we can see we now have two environments. So now we just have two sets of infrastructure that are just copies of each other and we can deploy to these separately. They exist completely separately, but they will act basically the same. So now the last thing we're gonna set up is we're gonna set up two pipelines so that when we push code to our branches, it will automatically deploy our service to the appropriate environment. So we're going to do copilot pipeline init. And first we'll do our dev pipeline. It's going to be for workloads. And this is going to be to our dev environment. No additional environments. And now if we go back to our code, we can see this pipelines dev was created. So we have a pipelines folder now and we have our dev pipeline. And this is the actual pipeline itself. You can customize this if you need, but we don't really need to worry about it. This should all work. And if we go to the manifest, we can see that it is connected to my GitHub repository and it is on branch dev. So it just automatically did it on the branch that we are already on, as you can see here. So that is good because we want our dev branch to deploy to our dev, to build on our dev pipeline, which will deploy in our dev environment. So now let's go ahead and set up one for our production environment. And I'm actually going to just switch to that environment now, or that branch rather. Okay, switch to main. And now let's run copilot pipeline init. And this is going to be our prod pipeline. So again, this is gonna be for workloads and we're gonna deploy to prod. Okay, now let's check out if that worked as we expected. Okay, great. So now we can see that this, this pipeline is connected to our main branch and this pipeline is connected to our dev branch, which is exactly what we want. So now we just have to deploy both of these pipelines. So I'm just gonna grab this. And it's gonna ask us which one. We're gonna do both, but we'll start with dev. Okay. and. Now we can see it's gonna give us this action required message. So go ahead and open this link. This is just a weird kind of step that you have to do. And we can see our status is pending here. So let's select this connection, go over to the right here, update pending connection. Let's make sure you guys can see this. It's gonna open this window here. And now we are going to connect to GitHub. So install a new app. Install AWS connector for GitHub. Go ahead and enter your password. Okay, so now we are going to scroll down here and we are going to allow AWS to have access to the repository we need. So only select repositories. And there we go. Now we're back here. We're going to click connect. And that should work. There we go. We refresh. It is now available and we can see that worked. So now let's do the same thing with the production branch. Okay, now everything should be set up. So it's time to test that this actually worked. So we're on the main branch right now. We're just gonna make a code change and commit it. So say AWS copilot, let's make a basic change here, save that. And now let's push that change. So we're gonna add 
all the files because we also still have to commit all those copilot files. And we'll push that to main. Okay, so now let's see if this actually worked. So if we go back into AWS, let's go over to, well, first we can go check out the cloud formation because some more will be generated from those uh, pipelines. Okay, there we go. If, you're, if you ever don't see anything in AWS and you're confused, just check your region. For some reason, it threw me in US East 2 there. So we can see we have two pipelines that were created. And for these pipelines, you can just take a look. So it's going to be code pipeline is our main thing here, and then code build as well. So let's go over to code pipeline and see if we can see this executing. So we can see we have two pipelines, and our dev one failed, but we pushed to the main one. So let's see what's going on here first, and we'll take a look at that in a second. So we can see it is building right now. So I will cut. Okay, and our build pipeline succeeded. So let's go over and check out our deployment. So to find the domain, we're going to have to go into ECS. And that was actually our, we deployed to the production one there. So go to services, click into the service configuration and networking and then down here we'll see dns names open address and there we go we have aws copilot deployed and now let's go back over to our dev one so we can verify that um, these environments are fully separate so we'll go back to clusters we'll go to dev services click into the service configuration networking open address and let's see what happens here. Hello world. So we can see that dev is still pointing to our dev branch and the production one is pointing to our main branch, which is exactly what we want. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. And again, my next tutorial will also be on AWS Copilot, but will be much more of a real life example. We'll take an application with a front end, a back end, a database, all that, and we'll deploy it. We'll try to mimic what it would be like using AWS Copilot in the actual world. And for now, you can probably already see how powerful AWS Copilot is and how enjoyable it is to use from a DevOps perspective. And in that next tutorial, that'll be even more apparent. See you guys then.